All right. Yeah. What's up? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge. Number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Happy Rebellion Saturday. Rebellion's not tonight. It's tomorrow, but it's, it's Rebellion weekend, I guess you could say. And I wanted to talk about the show a little bit. Um, and this is the kind of stuff I would probably do on the on the new Patreon usually. But because it's a pay-per-view weekend, you know, we're, we're going to get into a little bit here on the YouTube channel. And I'm doing this because I kind of want to know the general consensus of what you are expecting out of Rebellion. I've seen a really mixed bag of um, people say, hey, this card's amazing. I've, some, I've seen people say this card is horrible. Um, re really mixed bag of results. Some people are like, eh, it's okay. You know, I see people saying, I didn't know Rebellion was this weekend. And then, of course, there's the people who knew it was coming and they got it marked on their calendars. So I kind of want to see what, you know, the, the general thoughts were. Of, is this a pay-per-view that you're looking forward to? Fortunately, I'll say nine times out of ten, Impact over delivers on pay-per-views. Pay-per-views are typically good. It's the weekly show that, you know, I always say is not a good representation of how good the pay-per-views are like the paper the, the shows the weekly shows to me if i was tuning in didn't really watch a product wouldn't make me want to order the pay-per-view that's that's if i was just you know johnny bag of donuts and i'm, and I'm tuning in i'm not an impact fan um i wouldn't know that the pay-per-views would be that good or as good as they usually are based on what they give us weekly especially in 2023 and i thought hard to kill was a little bit down for them for pay-per-views uh i didn't think it was bad by any stretch i just i thought it was down uh, from what they usually produce what they usually deliver now this particular rebellion show they have made it crystal clear to us that rebellion is their number four pay-per-view it's not oh it's either hard to kill rebellion no it's rebellion it is their number four because you you look at this card here it's featuring multiple rematches and i've always praised them on keeping the matches fairly fresh for the pay-per-views i've always praised them on that for years um i would say over the last couple they're starting to trend in that like wwe territory where they uh you know Two guys, let's say two tag teams are fighting each other and they switch off and have one on one matches with each other or, or something that they, they're over the last couple of years. They've been doing that more and more. And the reason I don't like that is because when a pay-per-view eventually rolls around, we've seen a lot of the stuff already. So that that's, you know, kind of my issue. The other thing that I've been saying for years is that they go too hard on the Impact Plus shows. They're three-hour shows. They should be two hours. Every title's on the line. Uh, they, they go extremely hard, in my opinion. You still want to be good, have you know good shows, and, and there's a reason to tune in for them. But I think they go too hard, and then the pay-per-view rolls around. They're kind of like, I think we kind of gave away a lot of our good matches already. Um, my loud, annoying cat just walked in, so if you hear her, I'm sorry. Um, I've got two annoying ones, actually. We just meow because they think that's what's hot on the streets. And let's talk, you know, Mickey James and Josh Alexander. Clear, you know, that they're the champions or they were the champions, right? And like the way creative had kind of been working in 2023 and even like the last, the, the latter part of 2022 was like, hey, we're putting a lot of effort into the world title and knockouts title storylines as they should. But then the rest was like really bad. Um, that, that I guess that's my opinion. But but I always thought that the world title knockouts title storylines are pretty good. Now in 2023, I have been shy about it. I really think it's been their worst year of television since probably like 2017. It doesn't mean that uh, they can't get back on track and we end up having a really good year. Like 2022 was good. 2022 was like solid. It was consistent. There were some things that weren't good, but not 70% of the shows were really, really good. Towards the end, they started getting really wrestling heavy and starting getting away from the creative. 
And now we're here in 2023. Obviously, I'm not sitting back there behind a desk and saying, hey, do this and this. I'm not in the wrestling industry, but my the way I perceive it as a fan and someone who's been creating content covering them for a really long time is that there's not a lot of focus on the storylines in the lower and mid card. When I say not a lot of focus, there's focus, but there's not a lot of creativity to them. They're very safe. Uh, they got storylines going that have been dragging out for a really long time and no one even cares. And it's like, can we just get to where we need to be? So in 2023, when you've got creative that you're like, oh, I don't know if I really, you know, I'm not really enjoying these shows. Like, how are you possibly going to build up a, a badass pay-per-view? Like, if the shows aren't good, you can't build up a great pay-per-view, you know? All that being said, could every single person on here over deliver? Yes, absolutely. I could be sitting here at the end of tomorrow night like, yo, rebellion was kick ass. That very well could happen. But I'm not expecting to feel that way. I hope that I do. I'm not expecting it. And the reason I say that, if you look at a card, as I said, multiple, multiple rematches. And what I've noticed a trend in some of the Impact Plus shows or the pay-per-views that the general fan base is like, eh, I don't know if I really like it. It's usually because there's like two matches that hold the card down. And a lot of the times they go back to back. And I think that's what happened with Hard to Kill. I, I could be wrong. I wouldn't even say it's Hard to Kill or maybe it was the Impact Plus show that month. They had like back to back matches that were like, Ugh, like no one liked them. And then it just felt like the overall show wasn't good. I, I want to say it was hard to kill, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know what matches. I'd have to look at the card. And when I look at this card, there's several matches that can fall into that category. Now, granted, two of them are two of them are on the pre-show. You got Champagne Singh and Sierra against a uh, Sierra, excuse me, against Heath and Rhino. You can count on one finger how many people want to watch that match. It's not. You know, I don't think it's it's definitely not a match where someone's watching it for free on YouTube. Like, oh, I'm going to order the pay-per-view. That's not, that's not even, you know, take that to the bank. That's not happening right there. And then they're doing a knockouts tag team title match, which I feel that a title should be on the line. One of the lower card titles, a.k.a. Digital Media Championship or the knockouts tag team titles, like the prop titles, those should be on the pre-show. I'm all I'm all for that. But this particular match, like this, I, I don't want to say the feud, but like the creative behind this feud, the gimmicks, the the Valkyrie, you know, disappearing has been consistently the worst part of the show in 2023. I know the Coven as a team haven't been around that long, but any of the Taylor, Taylor Wilde stuff um, has has really been the worst part of the show. So th this pre-show here, I don't, I, I can't see how someone's going to tune into and be like, okay, let me, let me check out Rebellion. I also think it's going to start Rebellion off very, very slowly. Now we might get, uh, you know, Gresham and you know, all them in the three way to kick off the show and forget about the pre-show, but I think it's going to be off to a really rough start. And then we're getting, um, you know, Team Bully versus Tommy Dreamer. You can count three three fingers how many people want to watch that match, and it's Bully Dreamer and Scott Demore. This is another one that, that, for the most part, the fan base does not have a lot of interest in. The saving grace is that everything Bully Ray has done so far has been pretty good. Tommy Dreamer is usually pretty good in what he does. No one wanted to see him wrestle. They had the busted open match, and people said, okay, cool, it's not on the pay-per-view, awesome, whatever. The match is going to end. It's going to be over. But it continues. And it's the, the participants in this. They're Now that Moose and Brian Myers have stepped in, it's like, okay, these guys might save the match, especially Moose. But you got Jabamora. You got Skyler and Hotch on the outside, probably. I'm sure they're going to get involved in the match. And then you got Tommy Dreamer, who very few people are interested in watching wrestle this time of the year or any time of the year. Um, there, there is there is a, a fan base who does like watching them. There is the people who still care about ECW that like that watch them. And and as I to rewind what I said a little bit, Dreamer usually for the most part like delivers. 
okay, for, for someone who likes that kind of style. But the hardcore has been done to death in Impact. It hasn't really so much this year. We're not getting all these street fights like we got last year. But people, for the most part, are not super jazzed about this. The busted open match went on entirely too long, and this could be that as well. And it has the potential to drag down the show. Now, you got Frankie Kazarian and Masha and, and Killer Kelly. These They can save the match. Moose can save the match. Like So there's some people in here that uh, that can deliver that were like, okay, this was overall good. But the potential is there also for this to be very, very bad. And then, okay, this is three matches so far. Number four, Santino, Joe Hendry, and Dirty Dango versus The Design. I don't see Dango wrestling in this match. I just don't. I don't see Dirty Dango being booked on an Impact pay-per-view. I think this is, could be one of those. I mean, the story already has been there that Design is trying to take out the authority, right? Dango's not really officially an authority figure, but I can see them taking him out. And that's replacing him with someone. This pay per view needs a surprise. Not every pay per view does. This one does. This one needs, oh my God, this person's here in Impact, even if they're here for three months. They need a talking point out of this pay per view. They can't just put on a good show and ride that momentum. There's not, there's going to be no momentum from the show if it's just a good pay per view. Tell you that right now. But this one with Santino in it and the, and design, which people are kind of over at this point as well. This might not be good either, especially if Dango remains in the match. Because then two of the six participants are heel or comedy characters. Well, really three. Joe Hendry is too, but um, he can wrestle. So we got a lot of comedy. Um, and I thought that they should have teased the Cobra on the Impact episode, but instead they did the Cobra. So there's no payoff for that. We're not going to. You know, there's no buildup to the Cobra on the pay-per-view. So I just have a hard time envisioning a good match here. If the Hardcore War and this are anywhere near each other on the card, I think it, it can really drag down the overall pay-per-view. I think it's going to kick off with the X Division match, so I'm sure it is, the X Division Championship. And then the uh, Ultimate X one uh, should be really, really good, too. Like, we know that those are going to be great matches. We know Jordan Grace and Dion are going to deliver. Like we know that. It's a rematch, though. It's the I think the fifth time they've wrestled. Um, you know, Bullet Club and Motor City Machine Guns. They've wrestled multiple times. Trey Miguel, Mike Bailey, and Jonathan Gresham in some way, shape, or form multiple times. Cub and Death Dolls. We've seen them fight each other. We've seen them fight each other one on one. Bully and Tommy Dreamer. We've already seen them going at it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like we just they just gave us on BTI freaking champagne sing and Shira versus Heath and Rhino, and we're gonna get it again. All right. So all these are like we've seen them all. Um Kashida and C Macklin is pretty fresh. They mixed it up in the tag team match. They should have tapped. I mean, they showed uh Macklin tapped. I thought in the episode of Impact, I forgot to say this in my review review. When they had the showdown at the end, Mac Macklin should have tapped again. They should have got into it and he should have tapped again. Um, and I think that would increase the story and made it feel like Kashida had a shot of winning this thing, which he doesn't. But it's whatever. Kashida and Macklin, that's probably the biggest what if on this. Not what if, but biggest. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It could be really good. It could be just okay. Like we don't know. We don't know what to expect from this one. I guess is what I'm saying. This is this one holds the key to the pay-per-view, in my opinion. If this can be really, really good, um, you know, I think the knockouts championship is probably going to main event this thing, as it should. But at the same time, I think they have to put Macklin in a position to main event the show. I think they got to give it a chance. I pointed this out when Eli Drake was the champion years ago. He never main evented the show. Um if he was in the last match of the show, there was some kind of post-match angle, post-match promo, post-match segment, something. They never went off with Eli Drake as a champion holding up the belt. And then that one bound for glory in 2017, that was horrible. I don't remember if they went off the air with him, too. I, I want to say they didn't. I, I feel like there was something else going on. 
And they have done it with some other champions in the past. Like Rich Swan, when he was a champion, like they didn't go off the air with Rich Swan with the belt, you know? They got to get away from that. You know, they're kind of like, okay, if it's not Josh Alexander holding up the title, then we got to have some kind of post-match something. I think they have to give Macklin the chance to fail. Uh, that's something he probably understands because we hear that in the military. Uh, give, give people the chance to fail. You know, maybe they'll they'll prove you wrong, prove you different. Maybe they'll surprise you. You can't assume someone's not going to live up to it. Um, but that being said, I think the knockouts will probably main event this thing. Overall, I just don't like the card. I didn't like the creative leading up to it. I feel like I've seen the majority of this already. I know that a couple are in blow-off matches as far as, like, there's stipulations, Ultimate X, Hardcore War. You know, I get that. And then we're getting, you know, the, the six-man for the for the X Division is elimination. So at least they, I think they internally recognized all these people have wrestled each other already. So how do we, what do we do to, to freshen it up? So they add stipulations. That's fine. But at the end of the day, we've still seen a lot of these. It's probably the worst pre-show they put together in a really long time. And it kind of shows where we're at with the card. I mean, with the roster. Because every you're going to hear me every once in a while. I say, who's hot right now? Who's hot on this roster? Who's got momentum? Who's not in the middle of 50-50 booking? Um, you know, who's hot? And you you now subtract Josh Alexander Mickey James from the equation. Oh, shit. No one's hot right now. We did 50-50 with Mike Bailey. We did 50-50 with Gresham. Um you know, Kenny King loses all the time. Frankie Kazarian, like, we didn't have him prepped for this role. You know, like, they could have squeezed him in if they really wanted to. And no one was hot. Um, even C. Macklin has not been dominant as he should be. So it's like, okay, we just got to hope these guys go out and deliver. So hopefully you didn't think I was, like, babbling too much. I, obviously, I want to know your guys' opinions, what you're expecting with the pay-per-view. If you think it's going to be good, if you think it's going to be bad, if you think it's going to be okay, if you're optimistic, if you're not optimistic, whatever it is that you feel about. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, I may do a live um, live stream reaction during Rebellion tomorrow. I may I may stream during the whole pay per view. You guys can watch with me. So just keep an eye out for that. If I decide to ultimately do that, I'll probably live stream after rather than review it, but just talk about it. Uh, with you guys, and then I'll do a separate review later. So that'll do it for your boy, BQ. I'm out. Peace.